Alan is a famous scientist. He invented a special potion that awakens superpowers in humans. One night, he was having a secret Zoom conference with his colleagues. Alan's assistant, Betty, entered the office and brought him some coffee. In a while, Alan said goodbye to his colleagues and fired Betty. Why? She poured poison into his mug. Alan saw her reactions because the front camera on his laptop was working. Later that day, Alan went to the basement where he kept his secret invention. Unfortunately, someone broke into his safe and stole the potion. Alan interrogated three of his co-workers in the building. Will said, Sorry bro, I've spent the last 24 hours watching rats for my research. Peter said, I didn't even know they had a basement. You're full of surprises, man. And Diana said, I think we heard weird noises from your office two hours ago. Who stole the potion? Peter. Take a look at his legs. He's levitating. When Peter was exposed, he took off into the sky and escaped. Alan headed to the parking lot, but someone had stolen his car. He called the police and found it across the street. The thief hit a tree and escaped. The police interviewed three suspects. Lily said, I'm a courier. I came here to deliver food for the lab workers. Nina said, I'm from a cleaning company. I'm here to clean, not steal cars. Bob said, I parked my car to get some coffee. I didn't see any crimes. Can you guess who stole the car? Nina. Look at her watch, it's broken. And the black glass fragments are still in the car. Alan came home. Someone broke into his house and stole a laptop with secret information. Alan interrogated three of his neighbors. Rosie said, You might think I'm crazy, but I saw a flying man outside your house. Nick said, I spent all day in the garden picking apples. I didn't see anything suspicious. And Zoe said, I was at a shopping mall with a friend and just arrived. Who lied? Zoe said that she had been shopping but didn't carry any bags. Suspicious, but possible. Meanwhile, Nick said that he'd been picking apples, but all the apples in the garden are still on the trees. So the liar is Nick. Alan went to the airport to take a flight to Argentina. He wanted to consult with his colleagues about Peter, but there were a lot of people who wanted to fly away too. Online booking stopped working, so there was a long queue. Alan is the 20th from the bottom in a line of 100 passengers. What's his position at the top of the queue? The position of passengers standing higher in the queue is 100 minus 20 equals 80. Therefore, Alan's position from the top is 80 plus 1 equals 81. After purchasing a ticket, Alan headed to the public toilet. A woman stopped him at the entrance and said, Sir, can you please tell my husband to hurry up? His boss is calling him and it's urgent. Alan agreed, went into the toilet and looked at the stalls. He found the woman's husband right away just by looking at his feet. What about you? The guy on the left is her husband. They have similar tattoos. Finally, Alan got on a plane and flew from New York to Argentina. It took him 10 and a half hours to reach the final destination. After spending three days in Argentina, Alan flew back home. However, it took 630 minutes this time, even though the plane flew at the same speed. Can you guess why? Ten and a half hours are the same as 630 minutes. After getting home, Alan noticed Peter running away through the backyard. Alan followed him, but Peter was too fast. Suddenly, Alan saw his motorbike in the parking lot. He questioned four people standing nearby. Hey guys, 
Whose motorbike is this? I need to borrow it. But all four people replied, it's mine. Alan took a closer look at the vehicle and quickly figured out the owner. What about you? The third guy is the owner. He's the only person who's not wearing or holding a helmet. His helmet is attached to the bike. Alan hit the road. He wanted to get to his lab to make an antidote for Peter as soon as possible. There are four possible ways to get there. Can you guess which way is the shortest? The fourth one. The trick to solving this maze quickly is to start drawing from the end. Someone filled Alan's lab with sleeping gas. He passed out and woke up in a creepy basement. Alan found four doors leading outside. He has only one chance to escape. He won't be able to use the doors again. Behind the first door, there's a water-filled room swarming with sharks. The second door leads to the room filled with a spider's web. The third door hides a space where scorpions are falling from the ceiling. And the fourth door is hiding hungry lions. Which door is more or less safe to enter? Alan should choose the second door. Although crawling through spiderwebs might be gross, he'll be okay. Alan arrived at Peter's house. Peter lives with two roommates, his friend Sam and his brother George. Can you guess which one of these bedrooms belongs to Peter? George is the only one who's holding a laptop in his hands. Therefore, his bedroom is the first room that doesn't have a laptop. See this pillow with red hair in the third room? It looks just like Sam's hair color, so it's probably his bedroom. Therefore, Peter lives in the second room. Peter apologized to Alan for stealing his invention and asked him not to call the police. Alan offered Peter to play a game. He gave Peter 100 pills, 50 red and 50 blue, and two empty boxes. Alan said, I will leave the room for a while and I'll need you to place all the pills in two boxes. When I come back, I'll draw a pill from any of the two boxes and if the pill's blue, I'll forgive you. Keep in mind that no box can be empty. And you gotta place all 100 pills in one of the two boxes. Good luck! How can Peter raise his chances of winning? He should put one blue pill in one box and the other 99 pills in the second box. This way, the chances are 50-50. The next day, Alan decided to explore an abandoned hospital. One week ago, the locals reported some strange sounds coming from this house, and some people saw a ghost wearing a wedding dress. As soon as he entered the building, he heard screams from the attic. Alan walked upstairs and found a wedding dress in a closet nearby. The music speaker replayed creepy sounds over and over again. Alan found three neighbors and asked them one similar question. What did you do one week ago? Chuck said, I was on a business trip in London for a month. I came back today. Sarah said, This dress is not mine. I got married in a red one. It suits me much more. And Wendy said, I'm a doctor. I had many duties in the hospital that day. Who's lying? Sarah. Alan didn't mention the dress, but she started making excuses anyway. Peter was fond of collecting rare coins. When he was 20 years old, he bought a special box to collect his coins. On his every birthday, he put 250 coins in the box. Meanwhile, his sister, who was also fond of collecting coins, took out 50 coins from Peter's box on her birthday. Peter was very surprised at his 60th anniversary when he opened his box. There were only 500 coins inside. How can this be possible? Peter was born on February 29th, thus he put 250 coins every 4 years. 
In 40 years, he put the coins in only 10 times, making a total of 2,500 coins. His sister was born on any other day, and she took out 50 coins from the box 40 times, which means she took out 2,000 items. Therefore, after 40 years, Peter's box only had 500 coins. All right, it's time for a personality test. Keep track of your points and check your results at the end of the test. 1. Do you like playing tricks on people? A. Yes, but only my close friends. They know I don't mean it. B. Everyone, all the time. C. Never. I'm afraid to hurt their feelings. D. Only if they play tricks on me. If you picked option A, you just earned 20 points. If you went with B, add 40 points to your basket. Those who chose C earned 10 points, and D is worth 30 points. 2. Which of these animals do you associate yourself with? A. Panther. I'm also posh, fast, and can always protect myself. B. Cute puppy. I wouldn't survive a day without my family. C. Kangaroo. I'm one of a kind, and you can't approach me easily. D. Chameleon. I can fit into any surroundings. All panthers out there get 20 points. Puppies at heart can add 10 points to their score. Kangaroos scored 30, and chameleons get 40 points. 3. If you turned into a superhero, what would you do first? A. Save the world. B. Travel the world. Being a superhero involves flying, right? C. Meet my favorite celebrity. D. Use my superpowers to produce as much money as I've always wanted. Option A brings you 30 points, B is worth 20, C is worth 10 points, and D gives you 40 points. 4. It's your birthday, and your friends surprise you with your dream car. How long will you be happy about it? A. A week, perhaps, until the joy fades away. B. Forever, it's the gift of a lifetime. C. It's no big deal, it takes way more than that to make me happy. D. I won't accept it. It's too much, and they know it. If you picked A, add 20 points to your score. If you went with B, it's worth 10 points. C brings you 40 points, and D, 30 points. 5. What's your favorite kind of weather? A. Beach weather. Sunshine, no clouds, and heat. B. I love snow. Playing outside or staying at home on a snowy day makes me happy. C. Rainy weather. The sound of it helps me calm down. D. Extreme weather. Thunderstorms, tornadoes, sandstorms. They make life more exciting. If you prefer sunshine, add 20 points to your basket. Snow fans earn 10 points. Rain fans get 40 points. And those who love extreme weather earn 30 points. 6. What movie would you choose to star in? A. Drama. I know how to play it because, well, I live it. B. Comedy. My sense of humor and irony will help. C. A superhero movie. I even know what my superhero costume will look like. D. I want to star in a detective movie and solve mysteries. Option A brings you 20 points, B is worth 10 points, C brings you 30 points, and D is worth 40 points. 7. How do you feel before an important event? A. Nervous and scared. I don't want to let anyone down. B. Excited. I love to test myself and triumph. C. Calm and focused. That's what helps me always win. D. Useless. I always feel like others are putting more in it. If option A is your choice, you get 10 points. Would you rather go with B? Well, that's worth 30 points. C brings you 40 points, and D is worth 20 points.
8. What activity would you like to exclude from your routine for good? A. Washing, drying, and brushing my hair. It's a waste of time. B. Having to pick my outfits. Let a robot do it for me. C. Cooking. It's definitely not my thing. D. Cleaning. Things turn into a mess again too soon. If option A sounds like the way to go, give yourself 10 points. If B is your choice, you just scored 30 points. In case you went with C, add 40 points to your basket. And finally, D brings you 20 points. 9. Which sense do you rely on the most? A. Smell. I could create my own perfumes. B. Hearing. I can hear someone whisper across the street. C. Sight. They say I have eyes on my back. D. Taste. It has never let me down. If you went for sense of smell, you get 40 points. Those who trust their hearing get 10 points. If you have an eagle eye, award yourself with 20 points. And your sense of taste brings you 30 points. 10. You're arranging a first date with someone you really like. What's it gonna be? A. I'll rent a movie theater or a planetarium just for the two of us. B. I'll cook some fancy food and learn to play some musical instrument. C. I'll take them to an escape room and let them show how smart and brave they are. D. Huh, I don't arrange dates. Others try their best to impress me. Option A brings you 10 points. B gives you 30 points. Option C is worth 20 points. If you choose option D, here are your 40 points. 11. What do you do when you're angry? A. Ignore everything and everyone. I need some time to cool down. B. Read my favorite book or listen to some music. C. Cry my heart out. It helps me restart my system. D. Think it over. I gotta understand what made me so angry and how to avoid it. Option A adds 40 points to your basket. Option B gives you 30 points. C is worth 10 points, and D is worth 20 points. 12. Your friend's having a housewarming party. What do you bring to it? A. Some food or something else practical will do. B. I'll write a poem or make a fun collage and frame it to make it memorable. C. I'll just ask them what they need for the new house. D. Hmm. Eh, nothing. My presence is the best gift. In case you chose option A, give yourself 10 points. B adds 30 points to your score. C is worth 20, and D is a 40-point option. 13. What time do you usually go to bed? A. 10 p.m. Well, 11 p.m. at the latest. I keep it healthy. B. 2 a.m. Or so. And then I wake up around 2 p.m. C. What sleep? I never get any. D. 8 p.m. I need my beauty sleep. Healthy sleepers get 40 points. Night owls get 30 points. Those who never sleep win 20 points. And those who go to bed early get 10 points. 14. Which of the following sounds like the absolute worst idea to you? A. Never leaving my hometown for the rest of my life. B. Doing all the work and watching others getting promoted. C. Have someone else pick my hairstyle for me. I just can't pick my hairstyle. D. Never knowing my schedule. I can't live without a good plan. Those who went with option A get 30 points. Option B is worth 40 points. C brings you 20 points, and D is worth 10 points. 15. Pick a color combination you'd never get tired of wearing. A. Black and white. I'm classy. B. Gray and pink. Official, with a playful twist. C. Orange, purple, and emerald, with a sparkle of blue. I dress brightly. 
D. Stripes, polka dots, paisley. <laughs> it's not about colors, it's about patterns. In case you chose option A, add 40 points to your score. B brings you 10 points, C brings you 30 points, and D is worth 20 points. All right, it's time to sum up your points. If you ended up with 150 to 230 points, your hidden superpower is invisibility. You can always disappear from an event you don't like smoothly. If you don't want anyone to notice you at a lecture or business meeting, they never will. Did you get 240 to 330 points? Congrats! You have the superpower of flying. You're doing things way faster than other people. Sometimes they ask you to share your secret of being here and there at the same time. You fly from place to place and are never late. You're always the first to try out a new trend or visit a new place. In case you scored 340 to 420 points, you're a super brain. You're one of the smartest people around. You can figure out the solution to any problem in a matter of seconds. When life gets too easy, your brain gets bored. You have an excellent sense of humor and irony. You like to plan things, and your plan always works out. Those who got 430 to 510 points, you have the superpower of reading minds. You have a lot of friends, and you make new ones easily. You always feel when something's wrong with them, and you know exactly how to help. You can also make others change their mind if it's in your interest. And if your final score is 520 points or more, you're a money magnet. You never run out of it. The second you realize that you could use some more cash, you find opportunities to make it float your way. You know how to save and how to spend money. I scored 410, by the way. Here's an easy one to warm up. Can you find the one and only B among these twos? Oh, it's right there! One of the many sevens here is a Z. Do you see it? Good job! There's one letter S hiding between all these fives. Excellent. It's right here. How about this one? I won't tell you the odd one out letter this time. You have to find it yourself. Yay! It's a C! Here's a bunch of Q's. Three of these letters aren't like the rest of them. Can you find them all? Done! There are three O's here, and I'm sure you managed to find them all. Three of these letters don't belong here because they are nothing like the others. Do you see them? There are three W's. Can you find three eights here? Got them. I need a pen to keep track of my points. Can you help me find one here? Thanks so much for helping me out. I think I need a little snack, but I'm allergic to apples. Do you think you could help me find a pear here? Here it is. I'd like to top it with pineapple. Yum! So good and fresh! Quiz time! Do you know what a hexagon is? Yep, it's a plain figure with six straight sides and angles. And one of those is hiding right here.
found it! You deserve a little something for all of your efforts. Can you find it among these hearts? Yay! It's an apple for you! Moving up, here's a bunch of golden eggs, and one of them is somehow different from the rest. Do you see it? I'm impressed! How about a slice of pizza? It's yours if you can find the odd one out. Well done! I think these roosters can wake up an entire village. One of them stands out, though. Can you see it? Yay! It's hiding right here! One of these apples is definitely more delicious than others. You'll see it yourself when you find it. Success! Time for a more substantial meal. Find the fried egg that's not like the others. They're all exactly the same. <laughs> Just kidding. It's this one on the right. Here's a task for those who can read between the lines or through layers of color. Let's see if you're one of them. Ah, that was an easy one. It's the word fame. How about this one? Wow, I'm impressed. And it's also the correct answer. Next, please. I think it's the word list. And it's correct. Can you figure this one out? The answer here is ill. And here's the trickiest of them all. I believe you can make it. Did you see it was bog? Now, let's go on a little safari. Can you spot the hedgehog? Here it is, hiding in the corner. One of these seals is, in fact, a kitten. Do you see it? Hello there, little one. Do you think a coyote is good company for kangaroos? I think it's safer to find it before they get in trouble. Good job! A little hamster ran away from home. It's hiding somewhere at the farmer's market. Help it find its way back. Thanks for saving it! You were trying to capture the landscape, but a seagull got in. Can you find it to crop it out of the image? Well, looks like it won't work out since it's almost in the middle. Three images here are exactly the same, and one of them stands out. Can you name it? Knew it was this one. There's an extra wolf here. What about these giraffe portraits? Ouch! This one's missing its ears. Look at these beautiful wild cats. 
They sort of look the same to me, but one picture is different from others. It's this one. Here are some penguins in their natural habitat. Can you spot the odd one out? Only this picture here has an iceberg in it. Time to hit the beach. But first, find five differences between these two pictures. Blue instead of red here, white car, palm tree, a parasol, oh, and an extra roof here. While you're figuring out what game they're playing, find five differences between the images. Well done! Whoa, not so fast! Do you see how the picture on the right is different from the one on the left? Sure, you got them all! These houses look identical to me, but are they really? Nope, they are different in five details. Did you spot them all? The view from these balloons must be something. The pictures are different in five ways. Can you name them all? I didn't expect the yellow balloon to change its color. The way you see certain images can tell a lot about your personality. What does this one look like to you? If it looks like a lion to you, you're a well-balanced, positive, and cheerful person. You make friends easily, as you have an open mind and soul. You love sharing jokes and make everyone feel comfortable around you. You never give up and believe everything happens for the best. If you see a hand in this image, looks like you're an artist at heart. Or maybe that's your real job. You have your own vision of the world, and you can always find the most creative solution to any problem. You don't mix with new people easily and only have a couple of real friends, but they're for life. What do you think about this one? If it's an apple to you, you take things for what they are and are pretty happy with what you have in life. You know you can always rely on your close people and they'll support you no matter what. You're always in a good mood and you pass it on to others. If you saw two profiles here first, relationships are your big priority in life. You might be going through a time of uncertainty with someone special to you. Remember, the best you can do is discuss it together and not hold it all in your heart things will surely get better. This one seems pretty obvious, but there must be a double meaning. If you see the jungle here, you're a natural explorer. Boredom is what you fear the most. You always want to try new things and go to new places. When someone offers to join them on an adventure, you never ask for details and just say yes. If you saw the face first, your home meets the world to you. You feel most comfortable inside your own little fortress. You enjoy decorating it to make it even cozier. If you have to choose between a night out and staying at home, it'll always be your own home and the people that make it so dear to you. Now take a look at the next image. What comes to your mind first? If it's a crown, you like to be the center of attention. You feel great giving speeches and performing on stage. You love to see the impression you leave on others, and you need that energy to be happy. Keep getting better at what you do, and the stage will always be yours. If you noticed a nice lady with her eyes closed first, you aren't too shy, but you feel more comfortable out of the spotlight. 
You sometimes think others are more talented or have more important things to say than you do, so you make way for them. Remember, you also deserve attention. Moving on, how about this image? If you see a face here, you always see the big picture and can get a grip on any situation quickly. You analyze things in your mind and make the right conclusions. If it's a picture of the city with a lonely girl in the distance to you, you have a talent for seeing the details. You know the little things matter, and you have great taste and make this world a more beautiful place. Alright, take a look at the sequence of letters. What are the next three ones? Each of the letters is the first one of the numbers from 1. O stands for 1, T for 2, T for 3, F for 4, F for 5, S for 6, and S for 7. Then there must be E for 8, N for 9, and T for 10. And that's today's alphabet lesson. Take a look at the picture and tell who's a ghost. It's the man on the very right. He doesn't cast a shadow. Two people, Libby and Gray, were chilling on a beach. A police officer came up to them and said that he recognized the bike standing nearby. It was stolen from a man a couple of blocks away. He asked which one of them stole it, but both denied it. Can you tell who's guilty? Take a look at the footprints. They lead from the bike to the place where Libby is sitting, so she must be the one who took it. After an accident, Samara was experiencing memory loss. Three guys came to visit her. Her twin brother, her long-lost cousin she hasn't seen for 10 years, and a guy from school who liked her but she never talked to. Take a look at their wallets and decide who is Samara's brother. It must be this guy. Look, he has a picture with her. A random guy wouldn't have one. Neither would a long-lost cousin, because the photo wasn't made long ago. On the weekend, Kira and her friends were supposed to celebrate a birthday of a friend online. But Kira didn't show up. In school, her friends asked why she didn't come. She said that on Friday evening, something happened, and she didn't have any internet or electricity for the whole weekend. She said that she used this chance to study and spent both days in front of the computer, writing her midterm papers. Her friends didn't believe her. Why? If there was no electricity, she wouldn't be able to work on her computer. A PC doesn't work without electricity, duh, and a laptop wouldn't last for two days without charging. Lenore accidentally sent a message to her sister instead of her best friend and didn't want her sister to see it. She stole her sister's laptop and tried to delete it. However, the laptop required a password. Luckily, there was a hint. Math, 2. Music, 2. History, 6, 5. Drama, 2, 3. What's the passcode? Every number indicates the letter you should take out of the corresponding word. The second letter in math is A. The second letter in music is U. The sixth and fifth letters in history are R and O. And the second and third letters in drama be R, R, and A. The password is Aurora. Esme was walking in the forest and got lost. Finally, like all the other times, she found the witch's house. Yeah, it's like Groundhog Day. She walked in, said hi, pet the cat, and asked to send her home. The witch wanted to make a deal. If Esme solves her brand new riddle, she'll help her. If not, Esme will stay with them forever. The witch blindfolded Esme. There was an unknown number of coins on the table. Six of them were heads up, and the rest were tails. Blindfolded, Esme had to divide the coins into two groups so that there was the same number of coins heads up in both of them. How can she do it?
So, since there are six coins heads up, Esme grabs six random coins and flips them. No matter how many coins there are and how many heads up ones she picks, it always works. That's because the number of tails up coins she gets among those six random ones is exactly how many heads up are left in the other pile. So when she flips them, they'll equalize. Estelle arrived on an island to spend her holiday there. All the locals there always tell the truth, and all the tourists always lie. Two girls approached her, and one of them said, Hey, I'm Sylvie, I am a tourist here, and this is Tessa, she's local. Can you tell if the girls are locals or tourists? Since locals always tell the truth, a local would never call themselves a tourist. So, Sylvie must be a tourist. But she must be lying about something. If she told the truth about herself, then she's lying about Tessa. Therefore, Tessa is a tourist too. Miss Virginia Dell was a rich young lady. She loved jewelry and kept a collection of her favorite pieces behind the glass in her dressing room. One morning, she walked in and found that someone broke the glass and stole her jewelry. The detective had three suspects. Ms. Dell's cleaning lady, Willow, who cleaned the house every day. Ms. Dell's best friend, Kelly, who had the key from the house. And her cousin, Sophia, who was staying with Ms. Dell for the holidays. Willow said that last night, when she cleaned the room at around 10 p.m., everything was all right. Kelly said that she hasn't been in the house for a couple of days. Sophia said that it's not in her manners to walk around someone else's house and steal jewelry. Who stole the jewelry? It's the cleaning lady. It seems like right after she broke the glass and stole the jewelry, she wiped off the pieces of glass while cleaning as well. It was a stormy night, and Alana and her sister stayed up late watching a soap opera. In the middle, there was a weather forecast. The weather lady said it'd keep raining for two more days, but in 72 hours, it'd be bright and sunny. Alana turned to her sister and said that the weather lady was wrong. Indeed, Alana was right. How did she know? In 72 hours, it would be the very same time as now, so it'd be night, too. It can't possibly be bright and sunny at night. The Millers were having a barbecue party in the backyard. They made some fresh orange juice, and Giselle bragged that she could tell the difference between fresh juice and not very fresh juice. She asked her family to test her. She got blindfolded. Her brother brought some old juice from the fridge and let her drink it, and then he gave her some fresh juice. Giselle could tell the difference. How? The older juice from the fridge was colder than the fresh one was outside. Mr. Thompson was a strict English teacher who never allowed electronics in class and read all the paper notes aloud in class. So the students had to be conspirative. Once, he read out the following note. 1, 2, 8, 13, 5, 31, 3, 15. I love this book. I used to read it every month. Can you decode what the note says? The numbers stand for the place of the letter in the phrase. The first one is I, the second one is L, the eighth one is I, the thirteenth one is K, the fifth one is E, the thirty-first one is Y, the third one is O, and the fifteenth one is U. The note says, I like you. Ah. It was a lazy day, and it just started raining when Mr. Jones called a police officer. He said someone just bumped into his car and drove away. The police officer arrived. The only person not too far away from the place of the accident was a man trying to fix his tire. Mr. Jones says that's the gentleman who bumped into his car. However, the gentleman said that it couldn't be true because he was busy fixing his car the whole time. Can you tell who's lying? It's the guy fixing his car. The rain just recently started. If he was fixing his car the whole time, the ground underneath his car would have been dry. But it's wet, 
which means he's just arrived there. Brittany was having a costume birthday party. A detective came in in the middle of the celebration, saying he's looking for a robber who must be there, pretending to be a guest. Take a look at the people and say who the detective's main suspect was. Look at this guy. Unlike all the other guests, his costume is totally inconsistent. It's a cowboy hat and joker's jacket. He probably wore whatever he could find in a rush, trying to hide. Yvonne went on a business trip and asked her boyfriend, Dale, to go and buy her a special chocolate bar from a man who came there once a month at midday. That day, he was busy playing video games and totally forgot about it. Yvonne asked him if he got her the snack, and he said that all the bars were sold out when he came. He even sent her a picture at the park to prove he was there. Yvonne looked at the picture and realized that Dale had lied to her. How? The shadows are too long, so it can't be midday since shadows disappear at noon. And the clock that says it's noon could have been photoshopped. Five students stand in line. Adeline isn't next to Cleo. Bellamy isn't next to Danica or Cleo. Nor Cleo nor Bellamy are next to Eloise. From your perspective, Danica is on the left of Eloise. What are each girl's names? Adeline isn't next to Cleo, so we cross them from both columns, from Adeline's and Cleo's. Bellamy isn't next to Danica and Cleo. Danica and Cleo are both not next to Bellamy then. Cleo or Bellamy are not next to Eloise, and Eloise isn't next to them. Now, both Bellamy and Cleo have one neighbor, so they must be on the sides. But we don't know who's on the left and who's on the right. Let's try both. Bellamy's neighbor is Adeline. Cleo's neighbor is Danica, so in both cases, Eloise is in the middle. Now, let's remember the last condition that Danica is on the left of Eloise. So, the first order is correct. It's Cleo, Danica, Eloise, Adeline, and Bellamy. Whew! 